Yeah. Okay, we're a little uh, under two minutes. All right, Just we're live on Facebook. We're not live on the radio yet, but we're live on Facebook. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning. Yay. <laughs> we're talking about in East the Coast Pacific Northwest. I know. <laughs> Can't complain. Yep. Northwest, sometimes a little cooler spring feels if you compare it to a East Coast humidity summer. It's not so bad. <laughs> exactly. Well, I know. It's funny though, everybody uh, just that all thinks of, makes me think of travel, like how far we've come with this whole COVID thing. Last week was spring break. We were here, but everybody else I knew was out of town. Everybody. <laughs> got on a plane and went somewhere. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yes, I've been hearing that about spring breakers. Yes. That so. More people have been traveling. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, I don't know. I think change of scenery is good. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Signs sure. that things are coming back. So that's all good. We'll see what like happens. You said, like what? you said, the traffic's coming back too. So it is back. So I know having to like replan my days a little bit because <laughs> things are taking longer to get there. <laughs> yeah. So Remember, all good stuff. Like a year ago, you were doing it the other way around. You had to replan around the normal. I know. And when you show up and normal. you're like, wait, I'm half an hour early. <laughs> right. Now we have a new normal. <laughs> now we're back oh, to well. normal. <laughs> all right. So we're about 10 seconds. So I'll send it back down. Dun, 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 dun. Get ready for Bored with the other stations, hammering away on the same old talking points? Try Alternative Talk 1150 and get some variety. The views expressed on this program are those of the host, guest, and callers, and are not necessarily those of KKNW, its management, or other advertisers. This program is sponsored by Nicole Mangina of Windermere Real Estate. And this is my time. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 425 Show, your place to be for all things real estate and lifestyle related here on the east side. It's the middle of April. It is a gorgeous day outside. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Welcome back to everybody that traveled for spring break. Uh, mm -hmm. It made me happy. It made me laugh just a little bit. A lot of the schools had spring break last week. We had it. We didn't travel. Uh, we usually don't because we're in the middle of baseball season. And uh, I know that we don't travel, but I have to turn off my social media in the middle of the week because everybody else is traveling and posting these awesome pictures. And I'm like, wah, wah. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> but it made me happy just to see how many people were comfortable getting out and about and going different places. So I think that's a beautiful sign. And I hope everybody had marvelous times. I did live vicariously through your pictures and that's a good thing. Um, I don't usually comment on sports, but if you were a golfer, I'm not, my husband is, if you watched the masters over the weekend, that was an amazing round. That last round, there was a bunch, they all imploded and they all hit it in the water and then they had to do their recovery shots. I don't know, seemed hard. I don't golf, but that seemed pretty tricky. <laughs> Except for the champion, the winner did the same and he ended up holding ground though. He did, that was impressive. Because yep. I was watching it with my husband who's a huge golfer and they went in the water and he goes, oh geez, here we go, it's all blowing up. And you know what, <laughs> that guy kept it together. Good job. I think you deserve a round of applause for that. And <laughs> he we be talking about it is Hideki Matsuya. Ma. I think I said that right. He is our first Japanese uh, winner, so. Uh, Congratulations to him. I know. It's yeah, I know. Stuff, it's super, super cool. Right? Yeah. I think that's awesome. And it, and they had the Masters because that got postponed last year. Totally. So another full circle. Maybe this is all going to be okay kind of moment. So good job. All right. Real, um, real estate update. Voice cracking there. Real estate update for the week. The stats are out for March. They continue to be pretty amazing. couple things to note. Uh, there is a 0 0.2 month supply of inventory. That's low. Uh, to give you a kind of a frame of reference, we've been running about a month, month and a half. A balanced market is four to six months supply of inventory. And what that means is if nothing else came on the market based on the number of sales that are happening, how long would it take us to sell through 
a currently available inventory. So 0.2 months, not a lot of time. Uh, so if you're thinking about selling, now may be the perfect time. Other things to note, we are up 30% price-wise. The sales at price in March, 30% higher this year than last year. That being said, 13% of the homes that go under contract don't make it to closing. So as much of a sure thing as this market is, doesn't always get there. So make sure you've got the right agent because there's a lot of things your agent can do from the very beginning to make sure you're in the group that does close. If you have questions about real estate buying or selling, I invite you to reach out. I'm always happy to answer your questions. Nicole at NicoleMangina.com. There you go. And so now without further ado, I'm excited for our guest today. We have Stephanie Heyer joining us or Stephanie Reed. Reed sorry about that. <laughs> I've known you for years. I know. <laughs> How dare I get married? Jeez. Darn it. <laughs> That's okay. Yes, Stephanie Wright. Thank you for joining us, Stephanie Wright. Sorry about that. It's so funny. I, right as I was saying it, I was like, oh, shoot. I think. <laughs> That's okay. I know people for a long time who are still doing that. So no worries. <laughs> okay. Well, Stephanie Reitz is joining us today, the author of my raincoat has a silver lining. It's a book of poems for children and really adults because we all need these every now and then. <laughs> Something to cheer us up. Absolutely. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Um, thank tell, you for having yes, me. Yes, tell me about your book. I read it over the weekend. It's awesome, um, but tell me about it. Yeah, so it's called My Raincoat Has a Silver Lining. Um, it's my first published book. Um, it's a collection of poems that mm -hmm. are, I would say, whimsical and mm -hmm. humorous and funny yes. um, for kids, um, really anybody from the age of, you know, five, six years old, where a parent would read to the, to the mm -hmm. child, to somebody who's, you know, in fourth, fifth grade in elementary school um, and can read it for themselves. And I've had as you said, a number of adults reach out to me to say that they love it and, uh, you know, that they've had fun and enjoyed reading it as well, just because the poems are, are a little bit different. So um, it's, you know, it's terrific to have it out there. It just um, got officially um, released for sale uh, on April 7th, so fairly recently, and it had been on, on pre-sale for about a month and a half to two months before that. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody who pre-ordered the book has been getting them in the past week. And that's been really fun because I've been you know, hearing from a lot of people and that that's really rewarding and fun. Yeah. That's a wonderful. So this is your first book. What an accomplishment. How does that feel to actually get it out into the world? <laughs> Thank you. It feels amazing. Um, you know, I didn't actually set out to write a book, mm -hmm. Um, I wrote these poems actually over a decade ago. Oh my goodness. That's so cool. So it was a sort of a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Um, and the way that they started to form and this project started to form was kind of funny. Um, I was waking up in the middle of the night with almost fully formed stanzas of poetry in my head. Wow. So I clearly was dreaming about writing or dreaming about something. And I, I would wake up and I would have just this, this stanza or this rhyme or these images and words in my head. And I started keeping a pad of paper by my bed because it was sort of routinely happening in the middle of the night. <laughs> and I have no idea why. Mm -hmm. And so I would just jot down the stanza or two. And then within the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours in during waking hours, try to come back to it and, and flesh out the rest of the poem. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got about four or five of them that way. And then I decided, well, this is, you know, sort of starting to be a collection of poems and maybe I'll actually sit down when I'm awake and try and write a few more. <laughs> Um, and I wrote them over about a year, I would say, just sort of as they came to me. Mm -hmm. um, and they wound up being, you know, a small collection of, of poems uh, that I never did anything with. I just decided, hey, that was fun. 
just for me, some yeah. cute poems that I wrote. And, um, but I had some very persistent family members, including predominantly my sister who nudged me and nudged me and nudged me. And when are you going to publish them? And I said, no, you just like them because you're my family. And she didn't let up. And um, I stopped working um, uh, last year. I uh, was laid off from my job mm -hmm. and I had a bunch of time and I thought, wow, maybe now is a good time to do something with them. Yeah. And I started doing all the research into self-publishing and finding a children's book illustrator and started the whole process. That's amazing. See? all kinds of beautiful things that have come out of the last year. Yeah. And you've had the time to, to create something so beautiful and to share your poems with everybody. I love that. I think it's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And you know that those family members are good for stuff, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes yes. all that needling is for good purpose. <laughs> A plus in persistence. I'm telling you. <laughs> I love it. And I, I always love the hearing the stories about how things come about. And I, that's so interesting that you would wake up in the middle of the night and just kind of have these in your head. That's cool. Yeah. It's um, the first time it happened. I just thought, oh, I must've been having, you know, some kind of a dream where I was thinking about something and, but it started, you know, it happened to several times and I thought, what am I doing when I'm sleeping? Like <laughs> I'm supposed to be sleeping. I'm supposed to be getting up for work the next morning. And here I am at two in the morning scribbling in my, you know, in my notebook. Um, and thankfully, I guess maybe that's just the way the process launched because then I was able to sort of transfer most of my process to the, to the daytime. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was very, very funny. And um, yeah, the first couple of poems that I wrote, you know, really started that way. Yeah, I love it. And you mentioned finding an illustrator. It is, it's the sweetest book, just the pictures that are inside that go with each of the poems. They're also perfect for each one. Yeah, really thank great. you. Yeah, you, um, that's, you know, a new process to me. I've never had to work with an illustrator. I mean, obviously I've never written a book before. Um, and so you really have to understand the style that you want um, the artwork to be in and, and the illustrations and what you want them to convey. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to give fairly detailed, you know, descriptions um, about what you'd like to see on the page. Um, and I found an illustrator and, um, you know, went back and forth a couple of times and can you make this a little more this way or can you make this smile a little bigger? Or can you change the color of this girl's shirt or, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and after, you know, a few um, iterations back and forth, we, we finally got it nailed and, um, and ready to go. So that was um, a really fun and, and interesting process um, for me to go through for the first time. I bet. And to be able to think through it differently and articulate it, and that's a talent in and of itself. Because I know sometimes for me, I'm like, can't you just get in my head and just, <laughs> yeah. <know." laughs> It'd be so much easier if you could just download it through a cable to yeah. the other <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So I had to sort of figure out how to describe it. <laughs> that's Awesome. I love the um, the quote on the back of your book, the about the author. Stephanie writes knows a lot about needing a good raincoat. My raincoat has a silver lining. Her first published collection of poems is meant to bring joy to everyone who remembers the rainy days of childhood. As a student of international affairs and a frequent stargazer, her wish for every young person is the imagination to envision new worlds and an opportunity to build them. I think that's so perfect. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I do. I just, I think it's great. And, you know, like you said, there are, there are rainy days. Well, really in all of life, right? Childhood and adulthood. We've all experienced them in the last couple months for sure. So yes, to have a very Oh, go ahead. Very true. Yeah, very true. And I, you know, hopefully because they're fun and funny, um, yeah, that they bring a smile to people's faces, to kids and, and you know, big kids alike. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's fun to imagine things and dream of things and um, 
I think a lot of the topics that I wrote about the subjects of the poems are things that I enjoyed or liked or was interested in. Um, you know, there's one in there about dance um, and, you know, I used to, to dance and I've always been very interested in astronomy and, you know, stargazing as, as you said, from the mm -hmm. back of my book. So there's a book about, you know, traveling to space and this being among the stars. Um, I was always interested in maps and atlases. And so there's a, there's a poem that, you know, alludes to that. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I, topics that I think and hope, you know, children and adults can identify with and think about and enjoy and, you know, really bring a, a smile to people's faces and kind of a departure from just, you know, the everyday grind. Yeah, absolutely. And it, there's always, I'm a big fan of anything that reminds people to dream a little bit, to get back to that childhood of, um, you know, just dreaming and other worlds. And, you know, we're so busy in the day to day of everything, right? Yeah. The checklist of life uh, to take that step back and, and enjoy thinking about different things is great. Yeah. Yeah. And that was um, really happened to me, I think, in writing the book, too, that I, I was just thinking of whatever came to mind and how to talk about it in a fun or funny way. And just, um, yeah, it was a really good, you know, release and break from work and, and just, you know, daily responsibility and thinking about fun things and fun topics and, and putting something down on paper about them. It was, it was really a fun process. Yeah. Um, just it kind of happened very naturally never never felt like work to me or you know anything that I had to do it mm -hmm. felt like you know something very fun to do that's great were you a big dreamer as a child did you like you to... know um I think we all are dreamers and have mm -hmm. big imaginations as kids and you know I mean I started looking up at the stars with my first telescope you mm -hmm. know when I was in elementary school um and I wrote, I mean, I, I, I've been writing my, my whole life, nothing that I ever really published, um, but I wrote creatively um, as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I studied um, creative writing in school and I did journalism. And um, so I think a lot of times things that I thought of or imagined um, or created in my head, I, I did put down on paper, I did write about, mm -hmm. um, even as a kid. So yeah, I think it was definitely there then. Um, and just something that continued, you know, has continued my whole life, really. Mm -hmm. That's great. I know, but, but you come from the corporate world with your business. So I think it's so interesting, you know, we have this, these parts of us when we're younger, and then we kind of go into work mode and maybe you use it a little bit, but not the same way. And then they get to resurface at, you know, interesting points in life and an interesting point and a time in life with what's happened in the last year that you actually have, you know, time to do something with it as well and turn it into something. So I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're right. It's, um, I mean, having been in the corporate world for a long time, um, the right, the type I wrote a lot, but the type of writing that you do in that <laughs> is totally different um, and not anything I would publish in a children's book, obviously. <laughs> um, yes. So it was nice to be able to do a different kind of writing. Um, yeah, that does definitely harken back to more mm -hmm. of what I did when I was younger and not, you know, professionally employed. Um, and it did take, you know, having some time and space, um, not working to be able to focus on the project. Cause I, I didn't know anything about how to self publish a book mm -hmm. and I really didn't know anything about finding a children's book illustrator. So it took re some research and, you know, um, I, I don't know if I really would have had the time if I was working full time to, you know, devote the, the attention to it, that it, it needed to kind of get off the ground. Yeah, I think, well, at least I don't know about for you, but for me, creative things like it needs space to let it turn into something great. Otherwise, it's like a checklist that I can get done, but exactly. it's not the same as if you have the space to really kind of let it expand. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's very true. I think, you know, stress 
<laughs> detracts from the creative juices flowing I think a little bit <laughs> and the corporate the corporate world is a little stressful um and yeah and just time and hours you know in the day um mm -hmm. that uninterrupted uh, yeah much as possible and do the research and, you know, contact people. And, um, you know, yeah, it, it definitely, uh, for me, it was beneficial to have kind of the pause um, to be able to do that. And then the fact that it happened during, you know, the pandemic is, yeah, weird coincidence, I guess. I mean, maybe, right. maybe sort of meant to be in the sense that I felt that I was releasing this book during a time where people could use um, some smiles and something cheery and something to take them away from, you know, a lot of the stress and concerns of, of COVID. For sure. If you're just tuning in today, we have Stephanie Wrights on the show with us. Um, she is the author of her first book of children's poems. My raincoat has a silver lining. It is a beautifully illustrated collection of poems. We say it's a children's book, but really it's for all of us <laughs> because there's something in here for everybody, kids and adults alike. Um, I think there's just some great messages in here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I didn't know if you, um, I had a short one, if you wanted me to read it. To I was give... going to ask you that you read my mind. So that's perfect. <laughs> so this is one of the, one of the shorter shorter ones, but let me just, um, I have a, I have a friend um, back on the East Coast where I'm from, um, who has three kids and um, her daughter, this is her favorite. So I thought that I would honor her since her I birthday is coming up and read her, her favorite poem. Perfect. This is called Knock Knock Jokes. Oh. I like knock knock jokes. Do you like knock knock jokes? I think they're lots of fun. I like roller skates. Do you like roller skates? I skate faster than I run. I like hot dogs. Do you like hot dogs? I eat them on a bun. I like knock knock jokes. Do you like knock knock jokes? Well, this poem isn't one. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> so it kind of gives you an idea of the character of, of the poems and, you know, um, some I feel of them like are it was a suspenseful out. poem. It left me in suspense. Like, where's the joke? I know you're like, it's fun. coming. And I'm like, Oh, you kids, <laughs> you kids doing it to me again. <laughs> Excellent. That's what I was going for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, and they're all, great, beautiful, sweet poems like that, where, you know, it just, it makes you smile. All of them do. Uh, and the whole, I, you know, I'm also a big fan of the kind of concept of everything has a silver lining, right? I think that's always a beautiful message. Anytime we can be reminded of that, share it with somebody who hasn't heard it before, or just be reminded that there's always good that comes out of things if we choose to look for it. Yeah, and I think that that's a really important message um, for for kids, and you know, depending on their age and whether they are old enough to to understand really the concept of something having a silver lining. Um, I mean, when you read the poem, "My Raincoat Has a Silver Lining," for smaller kids, they're going to take it very literally that my raincoat has a silver, has silver yeah, <laughs> underneath. <laughs> yes. Um, but then of course, it will probably equate to superpowers. So yes, right. right exactly. <laughs> um, and older kids and, and adults will understand that, you know, that there's a double meaning there. So exactly. Yeah. And I think there, I think there are several poems that, you know, you can kind of read them that, you know, on a, a couple of different levels, depending on your age. For sure. Um, and I think that's perfect because it is, and it's good to remind kids and to have other ways of um, getting messages to them, right? You know, I know with our kids, at least, uh, if you can hear it from somebody else other than your parents, it's infinitely better. <laughs> than yeah, and you know, one of the, I think that's very true, thinking of different ways to think about fun ideas and talk about them and express them. Right. Um, and one of the fun things 
that's happened over the past, you know, week or two is I've had people sending me videos of their child reading the book, mm -hmm. reading the poems. And that's just been amazing. I didn't really even expect that or think about that. And just to watch their reactions and see their faces and listen to how they put the words together when they speak it. Mm -hmm. um, it's very cool. It is. Yeah, it's super cool. In fact, I'm excited. I'm uh, going on a trip with my sister and my nieces at the end of the month who are in first and fifth grade. Um, oh. And we're, I'm, gonna, I'm bringing this book because we can all read it together and it will be so fun. And I can't wait to see their reactions to the different stories and the poems in there. Oh, fun. I hope they all enjoy it. I, oh, I know they will. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's great. Again, if you're just joining us today, we have Stephanie Wrights joining us. She is the author of My Raincoat Has a Silver Lining. It's a beautifully illustrated book of poems for Again, we're saying children, but really everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's just great messages in there. Um, powerful messages, but very lighthearted. And it's just happy. You're happy when you read them. And that's what it's all about, I think. Or what Absolutely. You want. That's, that is what it's all about. And, you know, bring a smile to people's faces and, a, you know, a fun experience to their days. Yeah. And just anything, like I said, anything that reminds people to dream and embrace those childhood. Uh, I was talking with somebody about that before the show. It's that whole, what did you want to be when you grew up? Right. And what were your goals and what were your ambitions? And to get back to that space every now and then is a little bit fun. Well, I wanted to be an astronaut. Did you? I think that's perfect. That's why there is, there is the poem in there about traveling to space and seeing if you can touch the stars. And I think it's perfect. I love it. I'll never forget our oldest. He came home from school one day. This was when he was in little in elementary school and they were supposed to write a paragraph about why they wanted to be the president of the United States. And he came home so annoyed. I cannot believe I have to write this paragraph. I'm like, what's the big deal, buddy? I am going to be a quarterback in the NFL. Why would I waste four years as president? when I could be on the field. <laughs> Priorities, see? I'm like, well, could you like maybe make believe? I, like he couldn't wrap his head around it. I cannot do this, mom. Because there's life after being a quarterback? <laughs> no, no. We're, no, we're going the whole way. All right. <laughs> and we're gonna make so much money. We don't need to be president. So he was hysterical. He was so committed to his dreams. He could not wrap his head around doing this assignment for school. <laughs> and now it's all about baseball I know now it's all about baseball so now he'd have he'd be equally annoyed because why should he waste you know four years in the White House when he could be at first base or hitting home runs and in the outfit anyway yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and it's it is it's wonderful to dream and it's wonderful um, for kids to be able to think as expansively as possible yes. when they're young before life starts to you know, ultimately narrow those choices. Um, Absolutely. So if somebody wants to get a copy of your book, where do they go? It's on Amazon. If you okay. just enter my raincoat has a silver lining, um, it'll come, come up there. It's also on Barnes and Noble and other, you know, major booksellers online. So it's, um, it's available in multiple places and um, it's up on my, there's information also up on my um, LinkedIn page and and my Facebook page as well. So if anybody wants to check that out, but um, yep, ready, ready. And, and now as of a week ago, shipping. So I'm very, very excited. Yay. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. My raincoat has a silver lining. Thank That's you so much Nicole, for having yes. me. It's been a pleasure and um, I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great week. Bye.